Coach Miller here today and just wanted to talk about some zone defense. All right. Wanted to go over some of the reasons why we might play zone defense and also diagram, you know, a zone defense and how the rotations work and everything like that. So why do teams play zone defense? Well, mostly you're going to play zone defense if you want to slow the pace of the offense down. Say you're playing, you know, a really powerful offense that's fast or scoring a lot of goals like Syracuse or something like that, you know, just to give an extreme. You want to slow them down. You want to make sure that they're, you're packing it in, playing a zone defense. You know, you want to make sure that they can't get an easy look. You know, they're, you're forcing outside shots. You want to slow them down, all right? And secondly, you may just not have the best athletes, you know. They may have, the other team you're playing may just have better players than you, may be better athletes. So the zone D just gives a different, you know, look to that offense, and it could throw them off. Like, teams struggle, even some of the best offensive teams struggle at times playing against the zone. They just don't like it, you know. It's just they're packing it in, and it's, it's tough. you got to, like, string few passes together, and teams get impatient, and they throw the ball away, or they take an outside shot, and, you know, anything can happen. And the other reason you might want to play zone D is if you have a goalie who's really good at saving outside shots, then... Make sure he only sees outside shots. Don't give up any layups. And with that being said, you might want to go into a, you know, a zone defense. So I just wanted to diagram one example of a zone D, all right, and how it would look. So more than often, you want to have, like, your most athletic defenseman up top in this particular one. So I'll just say it's your long stick mini for, uh, you know, for this example. Then you have a D there, a D there, a midi here, a midi here, and a D there. So this is the initial set of what this looks like, okay? Offense is going to be in red. He has the ball over here. Midi's there. You have an attackman here, an attackman there. Tackling there and say a midi there. Okay, looks like that. So, this long stick midi, your most athletic guy, he's going to be guarding the ball initially. Okay. And he's fast, like he can go laterally, you know, pretty well. So, like, say, you know, all the sticks are to the inside. So, you're like, shutting down those passing lanes. So all these defensemen have their sticks to the inside, meaning facing the crease, okay? So say this midi makes a pass across the top, because essentially you're leaving him open, all right, to a certain extent. This midi is going to hedge a little bit to try to buy this guy time to just get over here and there so you don't have to rotate, okay? If you don't have to rotate, you don't want to rotate. But... With this one I'm about to show you, if you do rotate, these four people are on their own team, and then these two are together, okay? So, say this long stick midi couldn't get there, okay? Then you need to rotate, and it's this guy's responsibility to determine that. He's going to rotate up, guard this ball. So, there everybody's like pulling each other. So as soon as he goes, he pulls that defenseman over, this defenseman over, and this long stick midi is now over here, okay? So let me write this again on how it would look. So you had to rotate now. The ball's over here, right there, boom. We have this midi there. We have the D over here guarding this guy now. The D came in here to guard him, and the long stick midi just dropped down from there, down to there, guarding this midi. And you're kind of leaving this midi who made the pass open for the time being. Um, if, if they're in this type of set, it depends on what it looks like, okay? So these are all on a string. So if it happens again, you know, say it comes across the top and this guy can't make it, then the long stick midi will come up and they rotate this way. But say that the ball comes down, you know, the ball makes its way down to here and then makes a way around. 
and this MIDI does come over, okay? So say the ball goes down, boom, boom, boom. Once the ball gets behind, you want this MIDI to kind of be splitting these two guys up top, okay? And say it comes back up top and it's now here and this guy's there and the ball's there, all right? Now, he can't make it. So what we do is we slide, boom, 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 all right? So now it's slided two rotations where the long stick MIDI who originally started up here is now on the crease, guarding whoever's there and attackman. That MIDI who was over there has gone from up top to over there, and then you have a D there and a D there. So you see how that would work? Just a rotation, so they're all together. Say the ball, say there's two guys behind, okay? Say there's two attackmen behind. Now I'm just gonna talk about this string. You always want to guard behind. Well, it depends on your philosophy. I like this, like the guard behind. Otherwise, he's going to have a free feed to inside or whatever like that. So you want to send this. More often than not, you want to send the defenseman behind because you have more stick. to send poke checks, that sort of thing. And this guy would replace or whatever. If there's two guys behind, you'd both guard them. You know, it just depends. Um, that's how that works. And this guy's job, too, if the ball's up top, these people are sloughing in helping out as well, being like kind of, you know, safety valves. If anything breaks down, they can just get up in there and throw a check or whatever, thing like that. But if the ball's behind and there's two guys behind or whatever it may be, it's their job to guard that, all right? So that's just an example of his own defense and the rotations. And I just want to touch on some of the reasons that a team might consider going into a zone. So you might want to, you know, think about having that as an option if you're playing against a high caliber offense or whatever it may be. So Coach Miller from B2B Lax, seeing some more videos. Hey, Coach Miller here. And I want to talk to you for a minute because I've got a question for you. Why are you still here? And what I mean by that is, why are you still here on YouTube looking up lacrosse videos? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because you're looking for those tips, tricks, drills, and advice because you want to take your game to the next level. And I think that's pretty awesome, actually, that you're not on the field right now or in the gym, but instead you're at home on your computer or tablet looking up how to get better at a sport that I love, and you're doing it on your own time. It tells me that you love the game too, and you're probably pretty passionate about getting better. Well, I want you to watch something because I think it will be right up your alley. We spent a whole day with Mike Kimmel, an absolute beast of a lacrosse player, a college All-American at Hopkins and a multiple MLL All-Star. And we worked on putting together a completely free three-part training series for youth and high school players just like you. Because here's the thing, and don't get me wrong, I love YouTube and here at BTB we have a big YouTube channel with a ton of videos and whatnot because we want people to see it and improve. But a big problem with YouTube and with what you're doing right now, searching for videos just like the one you watched, is that it's unfocused. It's like you get this one tip or trick or fix or whatever it is. And I'll be honest with you, what you really should be doing is zeroing in on the two things that a lot of big time players, just like Mike, say are the two specific things that are really holding kids back from playing at their next level. Your offhand and your off ball play. Once you've got full confidence in your offhand, it opens up the entire field for you and effectively doubles your options, whether the ball's in your stick or not. In your off-ball play, well, I can tell you that for about 90% of the time in a game, you don't have the ball. But the impact you can have on a game by making the right moves and decision off-ball is staggering. So when I said earlier that we worked with Mike for a full day on the training series, that's what we focused on, like a laser. If you go through this free training, you're going to see the results right away. Trust me, thousands of kids have already gone through it, and that's the feedback we've gotten. Game changing. So, tell you what, stop browsing YouTube for the next 15 minutes, and right now, go watch the first video in our three-part free training series with Mike Kimmel. Down below, there's a link in the description of this video that will take you straight to a page where you just enter your email and will instantly send you the first training. We'll send you the next two pieces over the next couple days. Can't wait to see you on the inside. Have a good one.